It's bright and early. It's 8.16, which is not actually that bright and early, but for me at the moment this is bright and early. And I'm basically dressed because I wanted to figure out what to wear. Um, and I know I was talking about having like what trousers like fit me in my last video but I actually pulled out um an old pair of Arquette trousers from pre-pregnancy and oh I don't know if you can tell but I'm wearing them today I'll show you properly in the mirror um they're just like a wide leg trouser but the thing with them though is I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this they're navy they're a stretchy waist so they fit comfortably but they're navy and I think from washers previously they've got all these like white stripes like marks on them which I think is from like washing up um detergent or something um but the thing is we can't get the marks out we've tried re-washing it re-washing the trousers and I don't I don't want to wash them too many times because the colour's just fading from them because they are a couple years old and these used to be like my most worn trousers I wore these you know, nearly daily for a while to work because um, they're smart, but they're comfortable. But yeah, they've got white marks all over them. But I'm just going to have to pretend it's the style of the trousers because I can't get it out. And then I paired it with a black cashmere jumper. This is actually my wedding jumper. I wore this for mine and Alan's wedding with a black satin skirt and my Chanel sling bag. So I'll put a picture here um, with a big houndstooth coat which is so beautiful i love that coat i definitely want to wear that more this winter so yeah i think i just need to lint roll this because this hasn't been worn in a while we just got all our clothes out from under the bed which was quite hard because i made a little like me and alan have like um what are the vacuum sealed bags of our winter clothes each and i made a little bag for olive thinking that we would be getting Olive's autumn winter clothes out now. You know, we had no reason to think we wouldn't be doing that. So that was really hard. Um, and we just kept that under the bed. And then I've just kept all her like spring, summer baby clothes in um, oh, my battery's flashing, in her chest of drawers. It's probably good my battery's flashing. So if I keep talking about this, I'm gonna upset myself and I need to I need to keep going today, I need to do this today. I'm going to do this today, I'm going to get through today. Okay, thankfully I had another battery, so I've got you guys going again. Um, but today's plans, I've got my support group, which is for other parents who have experienced stillbirth or neonatal death. That's at 10, and normally I leave at 9, but I'm going to leave probably in about 10 minutes. Um, just so I can go get a coffee and sit on a bench somewhere and relax because these are quite intense and draining um, groups to go to. Obviously there's a lot of emotion in the room and everyone's story is a bit different but I do find that there are more benefits of me going. Um, it really helps with feeling less alone, it helps with feeling less isolated. Just the, the group I go to, it's a daytime group um, and at the moment it's only really mums who have been going um, and just being with them in a room and knowing you don't have to explain everything, you don't have to put on a facade or seem a certain way or anything, you can literally just be and I just think that is such a gift to have a room where you can go and be with other mums who have also lost their babies and just let yourselves be you can talk about your babies however you want to it's all acceptable it's a very accepting and kind and just open place and it's all confidential as well and yeah i'm very grateful for these groups today is my fifth one and i remember when we went to our first one i vlogged it actually i didn't vlog the group but i vlogged that day and i was so nervous to go and I'd cancelled a couple of times and yeah, I'm really glad I went. I'm really glad I went and, and go to these groups. It feels like I'm becoming part of a community and I feel like in a way I'm starting to make, you know, new friends with these mums and 
yeah, they're mums that I feel safe with because I don't fit with mums who have living children and who have never had experienced their baby dying and I also don't fit, fit with people who don't have babies so it's really, really a struggle. I'm a mummy but I don't have my baby with me and so when I go out on the streets no one knows I'm a mummy and that's really hard. But when I'm in these groups and I'm with these women, I can fully be a mummy. And I know I'm fully a mummy every day. But in this room, everyone knows that my, my olive existed and that my baby was real and that my baby was with me. Oh, don't want to get upset. <sighs> okay. I'm going to go finish up getting ready. And then I'll check in with you guys when I'm getting my coffee there's a really really nice coffee shop in Chiswick which is where I'm going um and I think I've shown it in a vlog previously but their coffee is so good their pastries are a bit rubbish and I really kind of feel like a banana bread and they don't do banana bread so maybe I have to go somewhere else and get that but their coffee is really really good Okay, I've made it to Turnham Green. I'm heading to this little cafe on the corner here. It's called Good Boy Coffee. And I've been there once before in a vlog. Their coffee is really good. Like I said earlier, the pastries aren't great. Let me see if I can get a better the road. Um, their pastries aren't great. So for a pastry, I would go to Chief Coffee, which is around the corner from here, or um, Gales. I don't want to vlog too many people, but it's this spot right here, and their coffee is so good. I got my drink. It's very hot, so I'm having to hold it like this at the moment. But look at all these autumn leaves that are falling. Right, I got a decaf mocha with oat milk, and all of the babies are out today. I don't know if maybe I came too early and the mums with little babies coming back from the school run but they're everywhere it's hard seeing all babies but especially newborns and there were two in the coffee shop because they just look the exact size of Olive <sighs> don't really know what to do with myself now because I've got half an hour I came early to sit at the coffee shop but I couldn't do it, two new babies I don't know if that's ever going to get easier, seeing babies. It's just a reminder of what, of who isn't with you. So it's a lot later now. It's actually just gone 9pm and I didn't end up vlogging anything earlier. Because I had my support group that went well. Um, and then in the afternoon I just had a really bad afternoon just not coping well um, in the afternoon and I've kind of you know talked it through with Alan and my sister and I think it just I think a few things just throughout the afternoon just kind of emphasized the grief of everything really um normally after my support group i grab myself like something takeaway for lunch and then i come home straight away so i'm really not out very long afterwards and then i come home and i eat my lunch at home and then um i'll just watch movies and snuggle up and just try and unwind um and i thought that i was in a place where i could go to my support group and then have plans afterwards so i went to go see my dad and then i went to the dentist and it was like really busy out and then I don't think I had any like emotional downtime after the meet the support group because then like when you're with other people you're kind of like you know chatting away and I thought I had the energy for it I thought I was able to do that now um it's the first time I've done that but I thought I'd be able to do it but 
I just think after having just such a bad afternoon that going forward support group days I just need to keep doing what I was doing before which is on my way home grab something to eat come home don't have any other plans that day even if it's going to the dentist just don't do any of it because the support groups are very intense um you know we're talking about a lot of very emotional things and it's not just my own story that brings on the emotion it's the other women's stories as well um so yeah going out afterwards that's not for me i'm not going to do that again um but anyway, yeah, it keeps kind of just coming up again and I keep feeling myself getting upset and I've been trying to distract myself watching TV, but that's not working. So I always find that when TV isn't distracting me, I need to like physically move around and move my body. It's 9 p.m. So I'm not going to go on a walk and I feel completely exhausted. So I'm not going to do like a workout, not that kind of movement. I think instead what I'm going to do is tidy the house. I do find that when I've had like a really bad afternoon, like today was pretty awful, um, it does take me quite a while to recover but I also find on days like today going to bed I find really hard because it makes me really nervous about what tomorrow will bring and if tomorrow will be, sorry, if tomorrow will be as hard as today was. So I think rather than just sitting on the sofa now worrying about going to sleep and what tomorrow will be like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to put on some music and I'm going to try and tidy the flat. I've got lots of clothes that we got out from our winter um, clothing that we store under our, store under our bed um, to put away. The house isn't really, the rest of the house isn't really messy because I've been... This past week, one of my focuses with my routine has been really focused on keeping it tidy and having time each day to tidy up. Um, but I've got some laundry here that was just washed put away and I, I'm going to make the sofa nice. I think in doing that it will make going into tomorrow that bit easier because I can kind of tell myself when I go to sleep tonight, no matter how I feel tomorrow, the flat will be really lovely. And then I can just kind of relax on the sofa or, you know, me and Alan can go on a walk or we might go get a coffee. We'll just see what the day brings. And on my way home as well, I got like some really lovely soup and things like that for tomorrow. So I think that will be nice. We had pizza for dinner tonight and we've got some left over for tomorrow. So we can have that too and then have some soup and just have really warming things. Lots of herbal teas tomorrow and just stay warm and snuggly. I think that's what the body needs um so i'm gonna do that now and i need to remind myself that even though today was a bad day that you know a month ago two months ago three months ago i never would have ended a day like today with wanting to tidy our home and make our home that nice safe open lovely space that i'm gonna make it now and that I'm trying to maintain it as. So I just sorted out my notebooks and some things on this table to start with. Next I'm going to do this laundry, make the sofa a bit nicer, put away some shoes. But even just doing this it's made me think tomorrow morning I think I'll do some journaling. Alan got me this journal recently. It's really pretty because it's got like cloud paper. Like each page is like pink and white clouds. I really like that.
so it's editing Eva here it's been a couple days um, and I realized that I never um, gave you guys an update on my Invisalign so I thought I would do that quickly now to end this video um, and then those of you that are interested can hear about it but basically I started Invisalign probably about 18 months ago um, and it was all going really well until I got pregnant with Olive in August so I think I started it in April or May 2021 I got pregnant with August uh, with August I got pregnant with Olive in August um, and I had really awful all day nausea and sickness with Olive and that went on until around I think it started to get a little bit better at week 16 or 17 but I was still being sick I just wasn't having the intense all day nausea um, and then I think I was still being sick until about maybe week 20 and then it, and then after that if I can remember correctly I think every now and again the sickness would come back but it was more sporadic so day to day it wasn't as much of an issue but it was more sporadic and I would never know when it would come on um but um and so I found it really hard to wear my Invisalign during my pregnancy it was honestly like having something in my mouth just made me feel even more sick and I just would do anything not to feel sick anymore I oof that was bad you know all worth it for my little olive and I would do it all over again for her but at the time it was tough and it was rough um so anyway I ended up taking quite a big break with my Invisalign and then after I gave birth to Olive um I knew I wanted to start wearing them again I got about halfway through my sets and I wanted to correct this tooth here because it's a bit outwards just having a look at it in the viewfinder uh major improvement now but it was just something I was conscious of I forgot to say actually um, I'm getting my Invisalign done with the Chelsea Dental Clinic who are on the Fulham Road in London and they're fantastic I could not recommend them enough the service is great um, the professionalism is really really great and I now go there for like all dentist appointments not just Invisalign um, and yeah I'd really recommend them um, so anyway, I probably got halfway through my braces, got pregnant, couldn't wear them anymore. And then after I gave birth to Olive, I think about two or two and a half months after I gave birth to Olive, I wanted to start wearing them again and just try and finish it because I knew I was halfway. Um, and then, you know, I called my dentist, went to the dentist, had a little checkup. They, you know, advised me on how to start again I just went back a couple trays and just got my teeth kind of used to it again I didn't have to start from the beginning I just went back to uh, trays than I was on before I got pregnant and that worked really well for me and then um, also if you have a break from your Invisalign talk to your dentist don't just start two trays back because everyone's teeth is different um, I did what was right for my teeth um, and then I just started the journey up again started doing my appointments again and I think I have four trays left because I'm changing this one tonight and then I've got four more. Um, I had 25 total and I'm on tonight I'll be on 21. Um, and then I've got my next appointment in about six weeks and then we're going to talk about if I need anything further. So apparently it's really normal with Invisalign to need refinements they call it which is just the final tweaks and that can be another like couple months of trays it really depends on the person um or I'll just wear my last tray only at night um as like a retainer to keep them in place um so I'm not really sure when I'll be finished at this point I kind of feel like I should have gone for train tracks but I had no way of knowing that my that a trigger during pregnancy would be having Invisalign in my mouth otherwise I would have gone for train tracks I think if I'd never had that horrific sickness with Olive then I probably would be completely finished by now um, if I hadn't taken that break um, but obviously in hindsight I'm like if I'd have known I was going to be like sick train tracks would have been perfect because I wouldn't have had to take them in and out they would have just been there and I would have been stuck with them um, 
so that's my personal experience, my story. I can't say yet if I would recommend it um, fully because my journey with it has been rocky, um, but that is due to the horrific sickness I had when I was pregnant with Olive. If I was thinking outside of that, someone who's not going to get pregnant and feel sick all day long, <laughs> I would probably recommend it. Um, it it is it does take work. Um, you have to constantly be cleaning your trays, cleaning your teeth. You need to wear them for about twenty two hours a day, so it is a commitment. Um, but if you have something that you really want to kind of correct within your mouth, Invisalign is really good for that. It just you need to be patient with it, and you need to be able to dedicate the time to it. Um, and I would say if you're thinking of getting pregnant anytime soon maybe wait till after you have your baby in case you end up like me and have horrific horrific nausea um so that's my update that's where i'm at with that at the moment i guess just waiting till i finish the next lot of trays and then i'll have a review and see if we need to do a few more or if i can just do nighttime wearing we'll see um anyway that is my invisalign update i will sign off the vlog here and try and make another one soon. I think um, what I'm planning for next week is to do like a really cosy movie day at home with like snacks and lots of lovely teas and cosy pajamas. So if I fill up for it, I will vlog that and then jo you guys can join me for a really cosy, like wintry day at home. Um, so yeah, potentially I will see you soon. I hope you're well and looking after yourselves. And, you know, as always, thank you for your, your kindness and your support and your patience with me throughout this period. I am doing my best, but it is very up and down with what I am capable of doing each day. Today I've managed to sit down and edit this and I feel like I'm able to do that today. But who knows what the afternoon will bring or tomorrow. You just never know. Okay, I'm going to love you and leave you.